Alrighty, so we are here on my testing virtual machine, and I thought that we'd take a look at a spoofer, uh, this time Evil Inside. I'm not sure the full name of it, but I'm pretty sure it's just Evil Inside. This sample was provided by someone, a uh, friend actually, so thanks to him. Uh, thankfully, the client builds are not unique, so it really doesn't matter if we run this or get banned or whatever. So. Let's just take a look at it in Detect It Easy real fast. And it looks like the, it doesn't detect what it is. Ah, but NAS file detector does. You can see win license the meetup. So that explains the file size. So let's just pop open X64 debug here as we saw that it was a 64-bit file in Detect It Easy. Okay, it has a console window. Let's uh, load our Thamita profile, and let's just uh, step forward. Okay, it initializes perfectly fine. Now, um, it doesn't seem to detect our debugger, however, it does say uh, couldn't find saved key, so let's just enter in anything and see what happens. Login failed, invalid key, okay. So, let's restart this. Continue again, and let's search for some strings. Search for current module string references. Let's see what we got here. So let's just search for invalid key. Okay, and you can see login failed, invalid key. Uh, so you can see invalid details here, so I'm guessing that's the internal name for it. Let's just scroll up and see um, what other things we have. Okay, invalid hardware ID. Time expired. Uh, hardware ID updated and login success. Okay, so it looks like this is what we want here. So let's see what it does uh, by just going up to the top of this function. Or actually, we can just breakpoint at the jump here. So uh, let's just breakpoint right before this. Uh, there doesn't look to be any other major jumps. Login is disabled. Okay, that could be a problem. However, I don't think it is since we didn't get that issue. So let's just scroll back down to here and we can just pop a breakpoint there and type in PC. Okay, our breakpoint was hit. So this is comparing RSI to C. Let's see what RSI is. RSI is OF. So clearly that's not right. Um, and then if we step over, it'll take this jump down here to the next comparison. So let's go back to RIP and let's just patch this to be a no operation. Oh, right. Let's uh, remove that as we have to check keep size and fill with notes. No operation. There we go. So now we can continue to step. It won't do anything. Ah, another test here. So it's testing something against hardware ID updated. Let's check the stack and the parameters. If we look over here, we can see RAX is equal to invalid details. So I'm guessing it's trying to compare, uh, just doing a string compare against uh, invalid details to hardware ID updated. So let's just patch this jump again to a no op. And let's just continue. Ah, okay, that was, um, that was easy. All right, login success, hardware ID has been updated. So now we should run into an issue where the server will deny our login because our key is invalid. So when it tries to download the modules from the server, it'll probably fail. So let's just press one. Oh, um, okay. That's interesting. So it did actually spoof us successfully. So I'm guessing the server does not have a check. Okay. Well, one thing, does the server even, is there even a server is something that we should be investigating because any competent server would just be denying that request. So let's just continue. Saved key found. Oh, okay. Delete the key. Yeah. Just exit, restart, continue. All right, 
already couldn't find save key. So let's go back, search for current module, string references, uh, hardware ID updated, yeah. Alrighty, so, um, login success, hardware ID reset, and then it calls a bunch of functions. Uh, let's look for strings related to HTTP. So let's just HTTP. Oh, okay, so they're using auth.gg. Um, so, yeah, there is no server in this case. They're just using it for authentication, and that's it. Okay, so there is no server, which leaves the question, how do they get the modules? So um, let's just... So one thing that I noticed when we were spoofing is that it seems to be using GDIRV or G driver, gigabyte driver, or whatever. Um, if you look at it, it will it'll have the same little uh, screen that it shows. So let's just see if I can find a photo of it real fast. Okay, I guess not. Let's just take a look at the source code here to see if I can find it. Yeah, so you can see driver unloaded, driver load error, but uh, down here, let's see here. Parse command line. I'm really just looking for strings here. Yeah, so you can see right here, target driver loaded successfully and successfully re-enabled DSE. So we saw that before. So we know that it's using the GDIRB loader. And something about the GDIRB loader is that it doesn't support um, loading. It doesn't manual map anything. It doesn't manually map your driver. It just drops it to disk. And then um, you have to have the, the .sys driver on disk when you run it. So all I'm going to do here is go to kernel 32. And I'm going to put a hook on create file. Um, I'm going to put a breakpoint on create file A and create file W. Oops, create file W. And now let's go back and patch our jumps again. So hardware ID updated, assemble, no op, um, assemble, no op. Right. Now let's paste this in and see if we hit a breakpoint. So one, oh, okay, we hit create file. Oh, <laughs> okay, so local temp bin. okay, so let's just step forward again. Oh, we hit another breakpoint. Okay, so you can see, yeah, this is definitely a gdirv loader. So let's just go to this, percent temp, and then using those two dots and the slash, it goes up one, so local. Um, there's no file here, so let's try hidden files. Oh, <laughs> okay, that was easy. Uh, there's a bunch of junk here, so let's just sort by size. Um, and you can see we've got three files here. Um, so let's just copy these out. And you can see over here, frau, q, whatever, that matches up right there. So let's just copy these to the desktop under, you know, let's say, because we chose EAC, so dump EAC. Paste these in, uh, mark them as not hidden. Um, and let's see if we can confirm our suspicion here that this is GDIRV by um, going to percent temp percent. Let's just try deleting all these, because if this is actually GDIRV, then it will error and say that one of these files is in use. <laughs> okay, <laughs> yep, there it is. So this is our spoofer driver. So um, you can just skip this. Oh, apparently, oh yeah, so this is our spoofer driver. So we can just rename this. Let's actually check it out and detect it easy. Let's just check out all these files. So drag in the first one, frau q. Console, console admin, if we check strings here, 
yeah, so this is the mapper. Um, so let's just name this mapper.exe. Um, then we can name this one, which we know is the driver. Let's just check it out and detect it easy anyways. So driver 64, check the strings. Yep, this is definitely a spoofer. So let's just go spoofer EAC.sys. And then this should be the G derb loader. Yep, it's driver signed. If we scroll down, yep, this is GIO. So this is the G driver sys. And now let's see if we can unload this driver and delete it properly, because that would be funny. So let's CD to here. And then how you unload drivers is do mapper and then the path to the driver. So slash J, just J, okay, we need to surround it in quotation marks. J, <laughs> okay, driver unloaded successfully. So yeah, now we should be able to delete this. Alrighty, so that's interesting. Um, so let's try dumping the battle eye driver now. And I'm pretty sure it'll be the exact same. So we only need to dump the actual driver. And for this, we don't need to hook create file because we know that the file will just exist. Actually, we should do that anyway, to be quite honest with you. Because I'm pretty sure it does some cleaning up afterwards, and I'm not sure if it, like, force deletes it or something. Or, like, nulls out the file bytes or something. So let's just restart it. Continue, continue. Oh, access violation. Whoops. We have to remove those. That's something that um, Thamita does. If you have an if it uh, if you place place breakpoints before the entry point, then it causes an error. Alrighty, let's delete our key, restart it, continue. Alrighty, so search for current module string references. We're ready to update it. Let's just patch these again. Alrighty, now we can place our breakpoints on create file W's. That's what it used last time. Alrighty. Two for battle eye. Alrighty, breakpoint. Perfect. So let's see. It's frau Q again, which is nice. So let's just go to temp copy out our frau q created all these files again frau q these files appear to be exactly the same let's just make sure that they're the same size and everything um interesting so some of these files have different sizes so i'm just going to copy all of these and plop them in here again so this is gderb.sys obviously oh yeah mapper okay so that's the mapper and this is our driver so let's do spoofer be.sys and make it hidden or not hidden. There we go. And now let's just continue. It'll create file a bunch of times. Let's just remove our breakpoint as we don't need it anymore. Cleaning up and closing. Cool. So let me see if it actually deletes the file somehow. So didn't delete it. Well, let's check it out in a hex editor. No, okay. So it just keeps the full driver on disk the entire time. So even without a debugger, we could have just gone to this folder and dumped it out. That's really funny. So let's just unload the driver real fast by doing the same thing that we did before. Unloaded successfully. Okay, cool. So now we have everything that we need to just replicate this spoofer. We have their both drivers. So let's make sure that these drivers actually work. So let's just go to say like a um, show uh, disk serial PowerShell. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see if this works. Yeah, okay, so 
VMware virtual, and then our serial numbers. So let's see if it actually spoofs this. So let's do mapper.exe gdriver.sys. Let's see, uh, spoofer EAC. Okay, so it loaded successfully, that's good. And let's check out our serial number. And you can see our serial number has changed. So this spoofer actually does work now. And now we don't need to pay a dime for it because we have all of their drivers. So let's just unload EAC and let's do EE this time. Let's see if there's any differences. I know there's a file size difference, so we're back to whatever we were before. Driver loaded. Oh, interesting. Okay, so the battle eye spoofer does not change your serial number. Let's see what's up with that. I guess I'm loading it. And we can open up this in Cerbero. Go to our native code. Let's check out this entry point. Alrighty, so our entry point does some randomization. Oh, this is interesting. Okay, so this is the battle eye entry point. You can see that for some reason, all this does is randomize your, your I think this is your video card. Yeah, your, uh, your NVIDIA serials. So all the battle eye driver does is change your GPU serial, apparently, which is interesting. And then it just returns. So all the battle eye spoofer does is change your driver or your serial number for your GPU. And for some reason, they've replaced all the debug strings with just a keyboard spam. So let's close out of this. Cerbero will tell us that, oh, you don't have a license. Oh, well. And let's check out the EAC to see if there's any differences. Ah, OK. Interesting. So this apparently does a lot more. Loading serial. Yeah, and then it does, OK, partition manager. Oops, whoopsies. Partition manager. So let's uh, check out the PDB here. Uh, debug data. Let's see. <laughs> OK. Um, so you can see the PDB path or the debug the debug file path for this is users Conrad, which is the developer of the spoofer, desktop, hardware ID master. And if you if you're into the spoofer scene, you know that hardware ID master is just a GitHub clone of BTBDs. Or, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so this is just a straight clone of this. So let's see if we can find any similarities between these two. So let's just decompile this. Let's see, kernel, main. Alrighty, so let's go to the main thing. Scroll down to the entry point here. Driver entry, loading serial, print loaded. So let's just go to here, driver entry. Yeah, so you can see this is just a straight one for one copy of um, the spoofer that uh, is public for free online. You can see loading serial. If we go to this first function, it'll be spoof disks. Part manager, let's just go to the top for spoof disks. Oops. Spoof disks. Yeah, part manager. Uh, failed to get double easy. So you can see this is just a complete paste. Um, I'm pretty sure that this is being sold for $15 a month, which is an absolute scam. If you want, uh, their files, their entire spoofer. I'll put it in the description of this video for download. Uh, yeah, I hope this was informative to you. Don't buy pasted software. More crap.